Hello. Today we're going to take a look at how to repair Rivendell Silver 1 and Rivendell Silver 2 thumb and bar end shifters. The Silver 1 shifter, as far as I can tell, is a direct copy of the old Suntour Sprint down tube levers. And the first instance of using these down tube levers as bar end shifters is in Rivendell catalog number five, the earliest instance that I could find. There's an article in here about how to convert the down tube levers onto Shimano bar end pods. I have a set of bar end shifters here that were sent to me by the legendary Pam Murray. Pam Murray lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. She has a Betty Foy with over 70,000 miles on it. She integrates her bike fully into her life for commuting, for all of her errands, all of her chores. She hauls crazy things with her bike. She finds a lot of cool stuff in the trash, which I love. She carries all of that crazy stuff on her bicycle in remarkable fashion. But the only thing I've yet to see is her carrying a piano on the back of her bicycle. I'm sure she could do it. So Pam uses her bike a lot and her components wear out and she has these silver shifters which she would love to resurrect and put back into use. And these shifters can seem like a little bit of a black box. They have a riveted plate on them. The parts inside are tiny. The parts inside are not available for purchase from Rivendell or from Diacomp. It seems to me that there are three ways to work on these shifters. The first is to clean them if they've become corroded, which has happened to me. You can cobble them together using some mix of typically taking used shifters and used shifters and putting all the best parts together to get them back in working order. Or if it comes to it, you can replace them. And if you replace them, save the old ones so that you can use them to work on other shifters in the future. So we're gonna take a look at PAM shifters, break them apart, and I will show you how to get them back into service, how to repair them, and how to get them all put back together. Let me start off to say that if you have one of these silver shifters and it's on your bicycle and it's not holding tension, imagine this is mounted to the end of your handlebar and you pull up on the shift cable and it just droops down like that, it could simply mean that your lock nut, your wing nut, is loose. So turn that nice and tight and you should be able to add tension back on to the shifter. Another thing that could be wrong is that you could have corrosion inside of your shifter that is preventing the pole from engaging the ratchet. If you don't hear the ratchet action, that's your first sign that there may be something wrong inside. It could be that the spring is broken and it could be that there's corrosion or dirt inside. So these two shifters need to be repaired. They're a little bit dirty, they're a little bit worn, but the shifter bodies are in good shape. There are no cracks, there's no damage. We're gonna begin by carefully prying off this plate. Be careful when prying this up that you don't put on too much force and cause all the parts to go flinging across your table or your shop. Not a bad idea to wear some safety glasses when doing this. But taking a small, yep, there we go. That just popped up. You can pry this up and out and then you will be able to see inside of the shifter mechanism. There is the shifter body, there's a washer, there's some other sort of dealy that holds the, um, the ratchet in place. Then there's the ratchet. Now also present should be a spring and a pull. Now this bag of shifters was sent to me by Mike Goldman. Thanks Mike, really appreciate it. And these are our sacrificial cobble shifters. So these, Mike said, were damaged in a fall. The bike tipped over. Looking closer, this, this, and yeah, they're both sun poor. So this will be very interesting. We're gonna be taking the guts from the old Suntour sprint levers, which are the basis for the Rivendell silver shifters to repair the Rivendell shifters. Hopefully all the parts that we need are inside here. I suspect that they are, um, but I've actually not confirmed this yet. So this might, <laughs> this might be the end of the video here in a second. So these bits that I'm removing are the bits that allow 
the shifter to mount to the shift pod. And we will get into that later. I will show you the full assembly. But for now, we're just going to focus on taking the shifter itself apart. There's this washer. It's not coming out. There we go. Plastic washer. All right, this is truly... Truly identical to what we were looking at before. So, this has not been opened before, as far as I know. Oh, it has. And we're going to pop this open. And set that aside. We've got duplicate parts appearing. Okay, so now you can see... Yes, all right. There, these are all of the parts inside of a silver shifter. We have the ratchet the pawl and the spring. Now, this is sort of a delicate operation. And in the past, I have had these pieces come loose and flying. So what you want to do is, I'd say, put your finger over the spring and the pawl, and then lift out the ratchet with a pick. And uh, I recommend using a vintage Coca-Cola ice pick if you have access to one, because they're beautiful and they're cool. So now you have your ratchet and your washer removed, and the pawl is free. The pawl goes in this little slot, and the, the trickiest part to remove is this spring. And the spring may want to fly across your shop or your shed, but if you're very careful, yeah, the spring, yeah, you can get the spring out. One thing that's really helpful if you can, is um, to have a magnet around, just a little fridge magnet, what, what have you, and just take that steel spring and put it on a magnet so it doesn't roll away. It just stays stuck to the magnet, which is great. All right, so now we've got this pawl, and what we want to do is we want to take the pawl and... There we go. The pawl and the spring, take them from Mike's old Suntour Sprint and put it in Pam's Silver. So now we have all of the parts arrayed for Pam's shifter. We have the shifter body. We have a piece with a detent on it. I don't know what this is called. We have a plastic washer, the ratchet, the pawl, the spring, and the cover plate. So we're going to start by putting this piece in. This has a little nub on it, and there's a washer, a very thin metal washer around that nub. So you've got this nubby piece and this very thin spacer. So you put the spacer over the nub and then put this in nub side down, face down. Then next we have a plastic washer and I think that the old versions are plastic and maybe the newer ones are metal. These have changed a little bit in the course of the lever manufacturing. So you drop that in there, and then you have your ratchet. So the ratchets are pretty genius. They have these little teeth, and they're stamped L and R, one side to a letter. And that allows them to use these same pieces on shifters of either orientation. You'll also notice that the lever body itself is stamped with either an L or an R. So you want to match your letters together. This is an L shifter. And we're gonna put this in L side up. The same is true for these pawls. The pawls are really cool and they can be dropped in. Very hard to show, I apologize. They can be dropped in to either an L or an R shifter. My neighbors are smoking cigarettes, it's disgusting. So what you want to do is put this guy in. You want that point to be pointing at the ratchet because that point engages the ratchet. That's what allows it to hold tension on your derailleur cable. So I've got the pawl in, the ratchet in, and now the tricky part is the spring. These can and will fly out of your fingers and go across your shop and you will maybe, probably, never see one again. Now fortunately I have found a replacement from McMaster Car and I will put a link in the descriptions or a very fine functional replacement for these springs that are original to the shifters. They are, the ones from McMaster are a little bit stronger 
The steel's a bit stronger. They're not quite as soft and springy, but I have found that they are a worthy replacement. So you're going to want to very carefully finesse your spring into place if you can. Again, I'm using my old ice pick. And that's in there. All right, I got that in there. All right, so next we have the cover plate. One thing I should mention is that sometimes these can get a little bit mangled when you are working on them. So you might want to either bang them flat. You know, it's important that this, this piece is flat. You might want to hammer them flat. Um, I'm going to use this uh, lineman's pliers as... Um, to get it a little flat and this is a nylon faced hammer so that's that looks flat enough to me and then you very carefully uh, put that back into place around the shifter and match that rivet up I have in the past put these in my bench vise and carefully pinched the plate against the shifter lever it's not a great shape for putting into a clamp there's a taper it's not flat, it's hard to get good purchase, but I just put that back in and I think it's in pretty good shape. Now, here's the beauty. Can you hear that from my little mic? Is that it's now ratcheting. So this will be functional again um, once it's reassembled and put back on the Pam's bike. Okay, now we're gonna take Pam's left side shifter and I'm gonna show you how to install it on a left side, on a left side bar end pod. So we're gonna unscrew the wing nut. Remove the plastic washer, remove the shifter body and now my finger's holding the rest of these bits in. You might want to put your, your finger over this part right here to keep everything from falling apart. So turn it over and two washers will come out. There's a, a thick steel washer. There's a washer with a window and then this piece, this little nub comes out too. So we're gonna take this one away the silver tube version. We're gonna take Pam's shift lever. I'm gonna show you how to install that. So start with the shifter body. Take this nub, push it in through the back. Take your washer with a window. Put the washer with the window inside there. Then take your thick steel washer, slide it over that rectangular shape with the rounded corners. And then you're gonna take your shifter with the L side down, and you need to fit the rounded rectangular shape over the other rectangular shape. So now we have this in place, and this is the tricky part. This is the absolute hardest part. This little washer here has that same, the negative shape of the rectangle with the rounded corners on it. And you have to line that up with the rectangle shape in the shifter. And you gotta kind of spin it and you gotta kind of finesse it and you gotta say a prayer to the religious entity of your choosing uh, mine is uh joe madden all right i got mine to fit now what will often happen is once you start to thread this wing nut it will cause this washer to spin and it will lose its attitude and orientation and you'll have to refit it again which is frustrating but if you've been good and you've cooked a sacrificial turducken to God, uh, Joe Madden, then luck may be on your side. All right, luck is on my side. I've never had a turducken, so joke's on Joe Madden. Um, and now we've got this shift lever reinstalled on the bar end pod. So we have using old parts from old Suntour down tube shifters repaired Pam's Rivendell Silver One shifter. 
It is clicking, it is ratcheting, it seems to be functioning as intended. She should get some more mileage out of this lever for sure. So I've repaired that one. There is another in here that I've repaired for her and I have a third that I will repair. Another thing that's worth noting is that when you cobble all of your shifter parts together from an old set and a new set, you end up with a lot of great, useful parts that you can use in the future. I have got duplicates and triplicates of all sorts of parts now, and I'm going to put all these together in a bag so that in the future, when I have the next set of shifters that need to be repaired, I will be prepared. Prepared for the repair. Okay? Let's say you don't have Pam's old shifters. You don't have the kindness of Mike Goldman to rely on. Your option is to buy new parts. I could not bring myself, I don't think in any situation, to tear into one of these bad boys to fix one of these oldies but goodies. So if you're looking for parts, I would look on eBay for the old Suntour Sprint down tube levers. I would certainly take a look at the Rivendell Owners Bunch Google group where I am an active member and many other helpful people are as well. And I think that if you need some springs, again, you can get them from McMaster Car. Another thing that I wanted to ask you all about, and may, hopefully there's somebody out there who can collaborate with me, is that I think that the poles that go inside could be 3D printed. And that if somebody took one of the poles and they did a 3D scan, that they could have them fabricated. If you do that, I hope that you make a bunch of them and that you make them available for sale or for trade with other people that use these shifters because they can be cleaned, they can be cobbled, and they can be repaired rather than replaced. So that's it for this video. I'm going to fix Pam's third shifter using Mike's second shifter. Thanks for checking it out. If you're going to be at the Philly Bike Expo, I will see you there. Have a great day.